just so I know. Okay. All right, welcome okay. back. <laughs> Let's play more fun games. Sook. More Shuka Himble Dimble. Oh, right, yeah, I forgot. That's how. Uh, right, I forgot about that too. Yeah. Yep, that's that's the name of the name of the day. Great. Because <laughs> we met Noel Senpai or well, Sensei. Just Noel. Just Noel now. If, just no, Noel. just Noel. She's there. He's there. Just Noel. She doesn't. She doesn't deserve. <laughs> she doesn't deserve. She teaches us anymore. nothing. She teaches us nothing. She doesn't... White. A color that evokes nostalgic memories. Things that have been forgotten. Things that shouldn't have been forgotten. Things that my father ordered me to forget. A hot summer day. The blue sky. Large, large clouds towering above. The landscape shimmering in the heat. The overwhelming cries of cicadas. The cicada chorus. It's so loud that I want to die. The husks of cicadas litter the open ground. This clearing is slowly being burned away. As though the sun is right on top of us. A hot midsummer day. As if the world had turned into a frying pan. Could it be a midsummer night's dream? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Akiha is crying. Akiha, who had always meekly followed us around, is sobbing uncontrollably. He did. A child lies crumpled in the clearing. A deep red stain has blossomed on their white shirt. They don't move so much as an eyebrow. I'm gazing down at the scene before me. My hands are red. Red like the child collapsed in a heap on the floor. No, that's not right. My hands are red. Red with the blood of the living being collapsed in a heap on the floor. Cheeky. I... I guess this is the dad. I guess that's Makihisa. Cheeky. The adults have arrived. As they arrive, as they realize what they're looking at, the color drains from their faces. What? What have you done? The adults take Akiha away. The collapsed child remains dead. Brilliant white clouds drift across the distant sky. I'm left all alone, staring vacantly up into the summer sky above. Were you the one that killed him? The adults are screaming at me. They're screaming the name of the person who killed that child. My name. They scream just those two syllables over and over as though they've lost their minds. Just two syllables. The adults form into a group and pin me down en masse. Me with my hands stained in a deep red. Me, the one who they call Shiki. Even now, I still don't understand it. Killing those who can kill. Killing those that live. What exactly is wrong with that? We're back in the room? We collapsed outside, right? Yeah, we collapsed outside, I guess. Uh, someone came out and got us. I'm guessing Hasui or Kahaku. Yeah, probably. One of the two. Yeah. I open my eyes. I feel like I just saw quite the nostalgic dream. One I couldn't fully understand. The glasses back on. I'm in my room. 
After the events of last night, my memories of what happened by the main gate are a little hazy, but it seems like I managed to make it back to my room, one way or another. Oh yeah, this is what happened. My mind, obstinate. my mind obstinately refuses to work properly. Last night's events come back to me in a jumbled mess. Everything was so ridiculous that it's hard for me to put my thoughts in order. But if there's one thing that stands out, it's... Uh, everything is so ridiculous that it's hard for me to put my thoughts in order. I think the shadowy uh, figure. Do... We still don't know who, who it is or what yeah. it's about. I would definitely say the shadowy figure. Yeah. I mean, we can, we can, us as the people playing it can put together Noel sen Sensei and Arcolite's whole thing. But the shadowy figure is still very confusing. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, shadowy figure can somehow see. With, shadowy with figure has mystic eyes, has mystic eyes of death perception. Shadowy figure, uh, what, shadowy figure tries to kill Shiki. Shadowy figure may or may not be a vampire. Maybe. And shadow, and shadowy figure just in general, we never saw what they looked like. Right. Yeah, them. It's that shadowy figure. Thinking back on it, that guy was waiting for me. He knew the path I'd take on my way home. There's no way that black shadow was human. As such, I can reasonably assume that he was a vampire. Maybe Arcoed's enemy decided to pick off her collaborators first, rather than target her directly? Well, not like we'll be seeing it again. <laughs> we'll be seeing Famous it again, aren't words. we? <laughs> yeah, we'll... Oh, 100%. 100%. Those eyes that were twisted in hatred. That vampire who could see the same lines as me has already been exterminated by the woman in nun's clothing. <sighs> anyway, I had better get up. I still have plenty of things I need to think about. But right now, I need to get myself out of bed. The time is 7.30. I'd normally be long finished with breakfast by with breakfast by this hour. Hisui isn't here. She's normally standing deferentially to the side of the room, but there's no sign of her today. She must have already tried to wake me several times. I assume that since I wouldn't wake up, she's stepping out of the room between the between attempts to tend to her other duties. And I guess I wore myself out so badly that I couldn't even wake up. Take a deep breath. <sighs> I hope she's not dead. Do you think he's Hisui would have seen the blood on his uh, chest? Uh, absolutely. Hmm. Right. Good question, actually. Hmm. This time, I'll take a nap before I meet up with Arcoide for the evening. I won't think about all the strange things that happened last night for now. I should save that for tonight and discuss them with Arcoide. If I can't even live an ordinary life during the day, I might up ended, end up doing something drastic. Right. I'll start by eating breakfast. I may not have an appetite, but you can't start the day on an empty stomach. A proper breakfast should help me clear up any should help clear up any lingering fatigue from last night. Oh. And he's dead. Uh, huh? I lift myself out of bed, but my body just comes crashing right back down again. I'm like a tree being felled by a lumberjack. I fall straight down, slamming my shoulder into the wooden floor. Well, shit. There's no strength in my limbs. I can't even get up. On the bright side, my consciousness is a bit hazy, so I don't feel afraid. My body may be totally numb, but at least my breathing is normal. Ah, my anemia again. I think to myself indifferently. And so, I simply lay where I fell. I watched the hands of the clock tick by as I waited for Hisui to call on me again, which ended up just being past 8 o'clock. I sincerely apologize. Please punish me as you see fit. I did not notice that anything was amiss. I am to blame for my oversight. It's not your fault. This happens all the time. It's not that big of a deal. Honest. 
I try and saw Kasui down off the ledge while lying in bed, the upper half of, the upper half of my body propped against the headboard. Kasui had found me collapsed on the floor when she came back to check on the room and helped me back into bed, where I'm now resting comfortably. Nason has contacted the school for us. I assumed that you would not be attending today in light of your present condition. Was that correct? Yeah, thanks. I feel a little guilty for taking the day off, though, especially over something as minor as a bit of accumulated fatigue. I believe that when you are no longer capable of standing up, fatigue is no longer the appropriate word. You are the eldest son of the Tono family. It will be a problem if you do not take better care of your body. Yeah. Hey, I am taking care of it. Misui scolds me, and I respond while putting on a forced smile. It's incredible just how panicked Isui was after finding me on the floor. When she first opened the door, she froze in her tracks for a few seconds. Next, she rushed over as though as though to hoist me upright, but then seized up with a strained look on her face for another minute. She then spent another few minutes pacing anxiously around the room before going to call for Kohaku-san. In the end, Isui never actually touched my body, but I could still tell how devoted she was. After that, I returned to the bed with Kohaku-san's assistance, I was treated to some easy-to-digest rice porridge, and now, here we are. The one silver lining in all this is that Haki Akiha had already left for school. If I had collapsed 30 minutes earlier, she might have ended up late for school as well. Anyway, thank you, Hisui. I've had a delicious meal, and if I keep resting like this, my anemia will clear up in no time. It's alright if you need to get back to your duties. Understood. However, I strongly suggest that you receive a medical examination. Yes. Please, no, not again. No. Not again. Uh, bring her. Bring her to me. Bring her to me. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Arech-sensei happens to be present this morning. Perhaps you would like to, have, to take advantage of this opportunity to receive a thorough physical examination? Oh, I wonder God. who the doctor was in the original version of this game. Probably just like Kohaku-san, right? Probably. Oh, so that eccentric doctor is here as well. Let me do my poly voice. No. Give it to me. To be you honest, already did the poly voice. To be honest, I don't need, an, need a medical exam. But I don't think Kasui will leave until I, until I agree. If I have to, then... God... We're agreeing with this, huh? Yes. Arach, Two. God damn you. The wife wins every time. That's right. Koakistan <laughs> is probably busy enough as it is with her duties as a maid. I hate this. <sighs> I'll ask Professor Arach to handle this instead. Well, you don't have to listen to it if you don't want to. You have this magical button called Devin. I will not. <laughs> I may have a bit of a hard time feeling at ease around her, but I can't deny that she's professional. Since she specializes in surgery, I should have her examine my wounds. There's also a chance I suffered some heavy bruising as a result of my scuffle with Noelle Sensei last night, so it might be wise for her to check, out, check for that too, just to, just to be on the safe side. Can't wait. Did she just live there? <laughs> she just she just hops back up. <laughs> I came. Oh my god! I hit my mic. I came because I heard you. You'd requested me personally, but my dear man there doesn't seem to appear anything wrong with you i rushed over here expecting some excitement like a blown off arm or a gouged out eye 
so I have to say, this has left me feeling a little frustrated. You could take that as being sexual. What? But I mean, no. It. You didn't. But I need say more that. in terms of my intellectual thirst. Okay. Um, you didn't need to say any of that. You know that. Okay. All right. Sure. I'm saying this to the character. Despite continuing to grumble discontentedly along those lines, Professor Arach dutifully performed a thorough medical examination for me. I was a little worried about whether my legs were recovering properly after that battle against Vlav, so after she was done listening to my heartbeat and checking my pulse, I asked her to give them a once-over as well. The results were all normal. No problems. Professor Arach isn't able to contain herself, pouting and grumbling that just who am I, who am I supposed to be, Frau Fruitless? Frau? Frau. Frau? Frau. Yeah, it's German. Gotcha. Frau it just, just, just means it's yeah, it's German for a uh, lady. Girl. Lady. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, your temperature is a little low. Okay, this is getting a little boring. So why don't I give you an injection or two? Hmm, how do you feel about? Trying a placenta one this time. A what? A placenta. Normally, this is used as a nutritional supplement for women, but I highly recommend it. Is she gonna give Shiki estrogen? Kinda. Interesting. I mean, to be fair, everyone's born connected to a placenta. I guess she's talking about the extract derived from a woman's placenta. People mostly use it as a, pre as a beauty treatment to improve their skin, but it can actually help you recover from fatigue, and even combat the effects of aging. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. I've actually had it a couple of times before, back at the clinic that used to take care of me. Oh my! I'm glad you're so easy to convince. You must be pretty used to the pain, hmm? Just what I'd expect from a young man with a poor constitution. Did she say Ara Ara? Ara Ara. Oh god. That is what she Omai would. is in Japanese. Yep. I wouldn't say that. The bulk of my treatments were taken orally. I only received injections every now and then. <laughs> and she said Umu. <laughs> I'm surprised she didn't say something about orally, given I see, her. I see. Right, let me see that arm of yours again. Okay, Zaikyu! Taking out that affected... Taking out the affected region and the patient's heart in one fell swoop. Yeah, no, the, the latter didn't do that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm taken. By a southern vampire. Yeah, that might be the worst needle prick sound effect I've ever heard. With the injection complete, the medical examination comes to an end. However... However... I would have expected Professor Arach to leave now that her work is done, but she simply stays exactly where she is, staring intently at my body. Hey, uh... Can you not? Prip... Professor? Was there anything else? Yep. I caught a glimpse of something during the exam that has me a little curious. Shiki-chan, could you whip those clothes off for me? Um... No? <laughs> I was gonna say, that is... Huh? Uh huh? Y you want me to get naked? Yup, yup, yup. Uh, but I don't need you to strip all the way down. After all, I don't want to be killed by the matriarch Chan just yet. Okay. I just want to get a good look at your upper body. <laughs> you have an incredible scar on your chest, don't you? Okay, yeah. That's what she's interested in. Okay. Uh-huh. 
I have so many things I could say, but I'm going to keep my mouth shut and be good. Say it all. <laughs> say it all. Don't. <laughs> say it all. Do please. it. We're posting Do this it. on YouTube, I would like you to know. <laughs> I, know I know. And we can get away I'm with it. Aware. We can get away with it. I'm... Hey, and all I was going to say is that she just, she's going to take her nail and trace out all of his ad lines. What's it? Oh. Uh -huh. Okay. It wasn't bad. So that's what you meant. Well, sure, I guess. If she actually does that. I don't particularly want to do this, but since Professor Arach is a doctor, I have no real reason to refuse her. No, she's I not. I take off my shirt and sit on top of the bed. What does that mean? Okay, on the one hand, this is very sexually disturbing. On the other, is she a vampire in disguise? No, probably not. Is she some sort of cr what? creature craving human meat? What, what did what did that mean? <laughs> he's such a he's so delicious looking. She wouldn't need food. Anyways. Professor Arach pokes and prods me all over with my sh all over my shoulders, upper arms, and sides, looking like she's thoroughly enjoying herself. Combined with her rather revealing garments, I have to admit I find myself struggling to suppress my baser urges. Shiki, Shiki, Shiki. Um, aren't you going to look at the scar on my chest? Shiki, you have arc wide. Oh. So I was. My bad, my bad. Hmm. Oh, I see. I'm not sure what they used, but it seems to have healed over nicely. You may be frail, but perhaps your metabolic functions are ordinary after all. Or maybe it was just that survivable. <sighs> How utterly disappointing. There isn't anything particularly wrong with this either. I get the feeling that's not much for me to do here. After two minutes of careful examination, Professor Arach gets up from the bed, curiosity seeming satisfied. But I must say, that is quite the scar. Not just in human terms either. Even the vampires you see in movies would die from something like that. Actually, I can attest to the fact that vampires that vampires that I don't see in movies wouldn't die from something like this. I wonder how much it hurt all that time. Just imagining it makes my heart go wild. It is that so? I was told that it was a fi it was a fragment of flying glass that did it. I got a little flustered by the sudden mention of vampires and blurted out an unnecessary explanation. What's that? You don't remember? You don't remember, do you? In that case, let's save that topic for another time. You did only just return after all. Besides, it's not like you could run away now, no matter how, how hard you try. Hold on. Is it me, or did this woman just say something strange? Just kidding! Don't worry about it, nothing to see here. Hmm, <laughs> okay. There are some very intense implications, not just the well, sexual then, stuff. It's just time. Well then, it's time for me to take my leave. Maybe we can meet up again when the time is right. <laughs> Do you think she might be related to Noel? 
Maybe. This is just this is just a side thought that I just had. It's just the way she talks and like the way she moves and just things like that and her looks, like she could be related to Noelle. That might be a completely wrong thing. But they could be sisters. Maybe. I don't know. Crack theory. Yeah. Crack thought. Professor Arach leaves the room, her heels clicking against the floor as she glows. How long has she been the doctor for this family? I think they said, like, three years? Mm -hmm. I think, roughly about. What was that about? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why, but her retreating figure reminds me of a spider slinking toward its prey. I would love to see her medical license. Specifically at the expiry date. Well, too bad. You don't get to see it because it's stuck between her boobs. You'll have to find it yourself. Because it doesn't exist. <laughs> yep. As the pain no. Buzz Lightyear once said, I don't believe that woman has ever been to medical school. <laughs> it's now the afternoon. After finishing a light lunch in the dining room, I return to my room. Kasui had been emphatic about the fact that I should be I should spend the time re uh, I should spend today resting, but I now find myself without anything to do. I've already recovered anyway, so I'll. Hmm. Second floor. Uh, Second floor. Wing. Second floor. Uh, yeah, we've already done Day the first floor, so yeah. Yeah, second floor, second floor. We've never been up there. We haven't been allowed. Second floor, second floor. After pondering what to do for a bit, I decide to take my first real stroll around the mansion in seven years. I'll start by wandering around on the second floor. The Tono Mansion cons consists of two wings, east and west. To the east is the office reserved for the head of the family, and beyond that are Akia's private quarters. You could consider the whole area to be her domain. I'm a bit hesitant to go there, so I'll stick to the west wing today. The west wing is forbidden! <laughs> But what's in the West Wing? It's forbidden! <laughs> I go out into the corridor of the West Wing. The passage directly to my right leads to the lobby. If I continue straight, the corridor will take me to the heart of the West Wing. And of course, if I go backwards, I'll be right at, the, at my own room. I was told that the rooms opening into this corridor are, for the most part, entirely vacant. It seems like they were re rented out to our relatives back when my father was alive. <laughs> If I remember correctly, that door at the end of the hall. I'm pretty sure that's the room Tonomakihisa uses to study. Hmm. Arcoid's words from last night. Arcoid's words from last night come to mind. You can't just assume you're the only special one. It's something that runs in the family. That's ridiculous. I wish I, hmm? I wish I had a voice changer so I could make it all echoey. <laughs> Fair enough. It's something that runs in the family. <laughs> <laughs> of course. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, but she would never say something like that without good reason. I'll... I mean, investigate, clearly. I mean, yeah. Go go look into his room. Find all the cool shit. And he's dead. He's dead. Yeah, he's dead. What? Aki is at school, so no one's going to, like, get mad or anything, right? Aki has gone Perfect to school. Time. Uh, Aki has gone to school. Kohaku-san left to go shopping, and Hisui is busy cleaning on the first floor. Right now, I'm the only one in this corridor. Rummaging through a dead man's room may be against the rules, but I'm a member of this family, aren't I? It can't be that big of a deal for his son to enter his father's room. You're technically not a son. Yep. The room at the end of the corridor is locked. I take my glasses off and stuff. Really? He's like, oh, it's locked? Alright, fair enough. I take my glasses off and sever the line on the you're, lock. You're gonna need a new lock. There's no going back now. I glance around the corridor to confirm nobody has spotted me, then slip inside. What's up with this room? Why is it so dark? It's gonna it's gonna open up and there's gonna be like some sus or you. There's gonna be some sus stuff in here, right? 
Oh, I see, like, weird shit on the walls there. The mummy man and is there's... gonna be sitting right okay. over there. Maybe, I don't know. It looks, it looks like there's, like, a... From what I can see in the darkness, it looks like there's, like, a statue of, like, armor, and then there's so much shit, like, off... Like a bust. Are these chains? There are chains. Interesting. You can't, Everywhere. you can't make a room this dark just by drawing the curtains. I put a hand on the wall and start groping for a light switch, but then think better of it. Turning on the lights might alert someone on the outside to my presence here. It's possible that I'm just being overly cautious, but I'll limit myself to using the light on my phone to look around. Oh no, this is gonna be horror times. Oh. Huh. Well, what the it's a lot tidier than I expected. The interior design is reminiscent of the office that Akiha now uses. Well, her old man was still using this room up until a month ago, so no surprises there. Even the bookshelves are still arranged as he left them. The only puzzling thing here is why it's so damn dark. Point my phone to the window to try and spot what's going on with the curtains. Oh. What the fuck? I was right! Look at them! They're rusty and weird, and they're chains. I thought they were caution tape. Then, there's, some, there's some mage shit back there. That looks like the, en or the entrance to an emergency elevator. Maybe. Uh-huh. There I find... A bizarre seal, the sort you'd never expect to see in an ordinary room. An iron... grill? But why? It's enough to make me doubt my own eyes. But, unbelievable as it is, the thing in front of me is now definitely real. The window in Makihisa's room has been completely sealed shut. It's not dark in here because of a few blackout curtains blocking all the sunlight. It's because this massive iron grill has been firmly secured over the entire window. The grill looks as though it's designed to prevent anyone from entering from outside. Or perhaps... The purpose was to keep something locked inside. This is bad. I don't know what this darkness is trying to reveal to me, but I can tell it's a secret that should never come to light. This place is a cage, built to contain madness. I need to get out of this you room immediately. Nobody can know that I was in here. Not Akia, not Kohaku-san. Nobody. If they were to find out, I have a suspicion there would be no going back to the little relationship we've enjoyed until now. Wait. I've already come this far. Why am I getting cold feet now? I press on, lighting the way with my phone. I'm curious about the bookshelves, but I don't have the time to go through them right now. Having a look through the drawers in Makiyuza's desk takes priority. I don't know what exactly I'm looking for, but my old man was extremely meticulous. There's a good chance they contain documents pertaining to the company, Akio, or even myself. There was nothing in the desk drawers. Or at least, nothing in the first two, which were already unlocked. The third drawer is shut tight. I guess that nobody was able to open it after he died, so I just forgot- it just forgot- got forgotten about. Once again, I take off my glasses and kill the lock book? Is this a diary? Inside was a bundle of- hmm? As in, saying kill the lock is one way to say it. He killed the lock. Inside was a bundle of old papers and a thick diary. The papers seem to be the Tono family tree. Why is something like this in here? This paper looks really old, too. I wonder how many generations have left this mark on their- have left their mark on these pieces of paper. There's no mistaking it. Below the name of Tono Makihisa are the names of Tono Shiki and Tono Akiha. They're there, but... What's this? That old man adopted a child nine years ago, but they died from an illness soon after. Hmm? Nine years ago. I would have been eight years old. I know it was a long time ago, but even so, I don't remember them at all. Maybe he had a child with a mistress, and was keeping them a secret somewhere outside the mansion? Was someone so unbearably uptight as Makihisa even capable of a thing, such a thing like that? Yeah. No way that's what happened. But, all the family heads have been surprisingly short-lived. The old man passed before he had 50, the one before him died in an accident at 35, the predecessor committed suicide at the age of 18. Wait. Oh, so it's like a King Todd curse. <laughs> so it's 
Something definitely doesn't add up there. I scan over the family tree again, taking a closer look this time. There's no mistake. All the members of the Tono family have died under unusual circumstances. Suicide, accident, murder, disappearance. Not a single one of them has peacefully lived out their natural lifespan. The unbroken- Wait, wait, wait how, did, how did the dad die? Did he- What did he die of? I think he died of an illness or something, right? Well, doesn't that mean he lived out his natural life? He just, like, happened to have an illness? I guess so? Does that not count? <laughs> I don't know how this works. I don't, I don't think he's... I don't, I, I don't think... Because he's saying that he died... Dying at 50 is still pretty young. Young, no, young. Yeah. No, that still is really young, but would that not be considered... An, did, Mm. No, I guess that wouldn't be considered a natural lifespan. No. Yeah. Eh. The unbroken sequence recorded here can only be described as a curse. Stranger still is Kentuck that the curse. Stranger still is that the majority of the deaths were suicides. The heads of the Tono family repeatedly took their own lives, some before they even became an adult, others not long after. My vision begins to grow dim. I feel as though all my blood is pooling in the back of my head. My limbs have become unsteady, and my breathing is gradually getting more and more labored. I try and escape the dizziness and unpleasant premonitions by turning my attention back to the diary. I turn the page. The date reads 2004. The year the child Makihisa adopted died of an unknown illness. I scan the text written in the diary. The handwriting fits my old man's perfectly. Concise, but neurotic. I read the day's entry aloud, speaking as though delirious with fever. The Tono family is cursed. All children born in the modern era are of atavism resulting from... This was written over ten years ago. The ink is blurred to the point where I can barely read it. Of course, myself and my children are also no exception. Ake in particular looks... Strong. Thinking about my child's future brings me sadness. According to the doctor I, that I was referred to, if she receives strict instruction from an early age, her genes... Magecraft. Magic. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did uh -oh. I hear someone handling a door? That's what I just yeah, heard. That yeah, that noise uh, yep. didn't sound good. I just... I just heard a door. They say that surgery is necessary tonight as well. I can't let Akia know. I'm sure my daughter resents me for it. She must despise me for being so harsh or onto her on for no discernible reason. It's all because of the Tono. But I'm relieved, no matter how similar Akia's blood Akia may be gonna storm compared in to her here brother, and she scream is at far us. more human. Far more human? What? Excuse me. Wait, what? What the hell is this? The Tono family is cursed? Atavism. Performing surgery on Akia? And that final line. Who is he referring to? Her brother. Brother. Her brother. That has to be me. I, I don't know who else. Oh, it's oh, mummy, mummy man. Mummy man. Freaking hell. Hi. Good afternoon, Shiki Kun. Well, he... oh damn no! Oh. My stomach oh. hurts. The wound on my chest has gone numb many times before, but this sort of experience is a first. A sharp stabbing pain, as though a scorching iron rod were tearing through my internal organs, searing through my inter my internal organs. I start to lose feeling, first in my toes but the rest of my body soon follows. I begin to collapse, clutching at the desk for support, but my outstretched hands can't hold on forever and I crumple to the floor, landing on my back. That diary is bad news. After all, it hasn't been properly redacted yet. Not that I'd intended to let you see it anyway. My consciousness fades. That man is 
definitely. I was hoping to have you stir up that immature family ahead a little longer, but say lovey. I don't know how you managed it, but I'm afraid that obtaining that key sealed your fate. Oh. You didn't get any key. We just broke in here. I realize that my breathing has already stopped. The lines of death. My headache. They feel so concrete, but they're gone now. I see. Only now that things have come to this do I realize. That annoying headache would have actually have saved me. I mean, without it, I'll never be able to wake up. The body of Donoshiki, which had been doomed from the start, falls deeper and deeper into a sleep, from which it will never wake. Oh. Well, <gasps> that means it's Neko Arc time. Well, we fucking died. Damn. It's Neko Arc time. Well, I Did guess we weren't sensei? supposed to know that. I guess we so. We supposed to know that until a later date. Probably, I guess. Mm. Hey, but we know now. Interesting. I mean, it, it, it's still like, it, that, that just gave me a million more questions. Why do birds sing? Why do shrimp leap? That That's Neko Arc, actually. Oh, that is? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why do birds sing? Oh god. Why do shrimp look? Is that you? Into a locked room. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, I see a taste, the old sensei. Program that tackles the countless mysteries of human history head on. Teach me, so old sensei. Oh, I like the sensei. other Neko Arc voice more. Oh, okay, the Kupopo. No, the the first one. Teach me, CL says A. There we go. <laughs> I guess. Starts right now. Hello there. Are you feeling well rested after the lack of dead ends in days six to eight? The story is really starting to heat up now. From here on out, the number of deaths will only increase. <laughs> okay, thank you, CL. We're gonna end up here a lot, aren't we? I guess so. I hope the wise and prudent Tonokun will choose his path with great care going forward. It happened one time, alright. Now, as for the cause of this dead end, you were stabbed in the back, weren't you? Seems like four eyes didn't get the memo about being careful, yeah? Or maybe the bandaged guy is more capable than he looks. Four eyes? CL's right there. <laughs> yeah, but you're four eyes. What? As strange and cap captivating as the room may be, Tonokun is squarely at fault for being so careless. Besides, this kind of undercover work is best done in pairs. Oh. One person to watch the door to spot anyone coming, while the other examines the documents. It would be best to refrain from investigating the study until you are able to team up with someone you can rely on. You're gonna need uh. Arcuide. Like me. Nah, Arcuide. I'm very helpful. Arcuide. Fuck that bitch. Fuck that bitch. Nah, we fucking die. We just need Arcuide. She can watch her back. But I take Arby's gift cards. Okay, and yeah, that's good. That that's a that's a decent argument. Um, wait, who? I I don't know who I am. That kid. I'm not. Too, I mean, I know. Would the, she take Arby's gift just cards? Just a disembodied voice floating through the void. Arco, do you take Arby's uh, gift cards? <laughs> no. After the fight we had, absolutely not. Oh, okay. I take Panera gift cards. Do you take RP's gift cards? Fucking die. <laughs> Fucking die. <laughs> I just think he's conscious. Also, yes. play Mario Sunshine, bitch. Bitch. <laughs> God, it's so stupid. I love Behold it so much. Behold the power of a vampire. Behold the power of a vampire. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Behold, the vampires... tampon of a vampire. Okay. I was going to say vampires Ew. do be cool, but why did you have to say that? Because uh, we were talking about it when we were playing Monster Pro. 
Yeah. Anyways. Just like a, just like an SPY. Mm, but do we know anyone who fits the bill? Yes, we do. Sierra's a martial artist, so I don't think she's cut out for that kind of thing. As a lone operative, there's nothing I can't do, but supporting Tonokun while infiltrating. Frankly, it would not suit me at all. It would be nice if you could find that ally someday. We're not allying with Noel. If that's what it's, if that's what it's like. <laughs> You just revealed a new flag. Who could it be? One of the maids? Sakuchi? Well, I guess we'll see. What about that girl who gave you the can of tea or whatever it was? Who we haven't oh, seen yeah. in a very long time. Haven't seen her in a bit. Probably because she's dead. She had purple hair. Either right? way, whatever uh, whatever is going on here has no connection to our vampire case. What about no. what's his name? The guy who we uh the guy our best friend from school? Hmm? Akihiko? Yeah, Akihiko. What about him? You Arihiko? Make him good now. Yeah. Arihiko, sorry. What if what if we had him help us infiltrate? And sneak around. Mm, I, don't I don't think that think would go, go well because well. I'm sure he would end up dead. Yeah. And then our other friend, Yum. Yumizuka. Yumizuka. What happened to her? <laughs> she's dead. She's like straight up six feet under. No, just like she's, 7 Eleven. She, she's still looking for a new job after 7 Eleven is now. Why don't we get Vol, his name was to help us? You know, the guy we killed. To resurrect them and get him to help us. No, I don't think that's... I, who's talking? Uh, CL, I think. Now then, the case of death is clear this time, so you can simply go back and pick the other choice. A wise man steers clear of danger. If you have Tono Makashin study in this and head somewhere a little safer. Huh? Oh? Huh? The inside of that mansion is lousy with death, lousy with death traps. Just what the heck is going on in there? I think I did like four different Nekalark voices in that entire segment. <laughs> yeah, I kind of but did. It's, it's fine. All right. So uh... this is why. Nope. <laughs> nope. No. Uh, I'd better uh, like, leave. Well, what, what if? What if he? What if you investigate and just don't pick the lock? That was the option. That well, was we option, can't right? do that. There was no option for that. Oh. No, we just walked up to the door, it was locked, and then we just got it, immediately got it, got took it. off our glasses. No. I had better leave well alone. Well enough alone. Akuad may have got me wondering about it, but there's no guarantee I'd find any answers inside Makihisa's study. No, you'd I'd... definitely find answers. Besides, you find answers, but you wouldn't be able to keep those answers for very long. Besides, it's way too risky. I wouldn't be able to explain myself if I bumped into Kohaku-san or Hisui in there. I'll just put all this out of my mind and go for a walk in, around the first floor instead. My guess is we're gonna come back to this with RQI. Probably. I squint at the rays of sunlight streaming through the, si the skylight. No matter how many times I see it, the Tono Mansion lobby is always an overwhelming sight. Neat. I didn't know I could do that. Huh. What? Uh, hide the text. Oh, yeah. And just look at the... That's cool. Nice. <laughs> As a child, I often got in trouble for exploring the mansion. Back then, the, ma the mansion was like a castle to me. I was convinced that there, were, there was a hidden tour somewhere that would lead me to a world of never-before-seen wonders. Like Narnia. <laughs> somewhere between then and now, I lost that childlike naivete, along with my unforgiving father. All of that is in the past now. <sighs> this really takes me back. Just walking down the hallway used to be enough to make my heart race with excitement. I began to recall bits and pieces of how I used to sneak around this lobby seven years ago. As if beckoned by those memories, I began leisurely walking around the mansion. I head.
head out onto the terrace. Strangely enough, I seem to remember the outside of the mansion better than I do the inside. The tunnel residence is vast. The mansion itself is already ten times larger than the average house, but the grounds it stands on are the size of your average amu amusement park. Seven years ago. I would have been ten at the time. It must have seemed like a, re a world brimming with adventures to be had. Each day I used to methodically walk around, carving my name into trees around the ground. I guess it would have been easier if I had the if I had these funny eyes. It was part of a game I used to play with Akiha back then, in which I in which we would try and steal territory from the other. We'd agree that anywhere you carved your name became your territory, so the two of us would run all over the mansion, carving our names wherever we could. Come to think of it, most of the time I spent playing with Akiha was spent in this garden. Unlike me, Akiha would actually abide by Makihisa's rules, which only allowed her to play for around half an hour of each day. Though, despite that, she would still trail behind us when we went off to have fun, quietly listening in on what we, what we said from a distance. And when it came time for her to join in, she did so with gusto, running around and competing with us for victory in whatever it was we were up to. I guess the foundations of her personality were already in place, even back then. She must have hidden her true self under five. She must have her hidden her true self under five, maybe in six layers of disguises in front of our father. Well, even with all that said, Aki has changed a lot since then. I failed to predict with just how much could happen over the course of seven whole years. Time passed, and she grew up to be a fine adult. Aki and I are no longer the children we once were. Oh, here it is. The exterior of the gazebo built in the courtyard. Low down on the columns and the nooks and crannies where the sun's rays can't quite reach, you can still see where the letters have been scraped into the stone. I circle around the gazebo, telling up the crumbling words, Shiki, Akia, Shiki, Shiki, Shiki. It seems like there were five matches that took place here. Just like the other spots, it seemed like the win-loss ratio favored me. I'll chalk that up to the fact that as a girl, Akiha didn't have quite the same freedom to roam that was granted to the boys. <laughs> I love the fact that above me, it says Shiki, as if we don't know who we're playing as. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should have just gone easier on her. Yeah, whomst? <laughs> Even if I reflect on my behavior as a child, the number of markings will not change. I wonder how many times Akiha, who hated to lose, shed tears of frustration as a result. Oh, I see. Maybe the way she's acting now is her way of settling the score. It seems pretty unlikely, given that we're talking about Akia here, but on the off chance that it's true, it would be extremely adorable. <sighs> it's like I'm the stupidest brother ever. With a wry smile, I raise my head. It's been fun reliving these memories, but it's about time I return to the... Hmm? However... High up in the rafters of the gazebo ceiling, I spot another set of letters. In a place like that? How did someone carve it all the way up there? There's no way a child could reach all the way up there. I'm not even sure an adult could. What's with that? It's my name, but... I step into the gazebo, then climb on the handrail to get a closer look at the ceiling. It's carved in such a place that an adult would never notice it, unless they were crawling around on the gar ground and then stood up. Hidden in the shadowy recesses of the ceiling, the small lettering. Watch out for your brother. What? Huh? What's that supposed to mean? Watch out for your brother? It's not Akia's handwriting. But then, this would mean that I was the one who wrote this. I thought I heard a noise, but turned around. As I do, I catch a quick glimpse of the brown and white maid's uniform through a gap in the trees. Huh? Hisui? She doesn't seem to have noticed me. I see Hisui enter the forest, but have no idea what she could be up to. Why the forest? From this point on, there's nothing but trees. I can't help but wonder what she's here to do, considering there's nothing back there. Hmm. My curiosity peaked, and I begin to follow her from a slight distance.
While there are no paved roads through the forest, trails have been constructed to allow people to navigate it on foot. It's said that the Tono residence was originally located within this forest. The ground where the current mansion and garden sits on used to be nothing more than a trailhead. Apparently, it was only used thanks to the efforts of the post-war family head that it became the way it is now. I keep walking through the forest. It isn't particularly deep, but I still can't see any end to it. Somewhere along the road, somewhere along the way, I catch sight of a strange-looking building. Is this building always here? I wonder if that's where Sui might be added, but she's currently going in the complete opposite direction. A building deep in the heart of the forest. Maybe it's a temple of some sort? And so, after around ten minutes of walking, my field of vision suddenly opens up. It's a field. Smack dab in the middle of the forest, the trees inexplicably give way to a wide open field. So what is this place? I can't say that I remember be there being anything like this here. This spot is so perfectly concealed by the trees, you'd never guess it was here from the outside. If I hadn't followed Asu here, it's possible I would have never known this secluded field existed. Has this always been here? If so, it would have been a great place to play. I don't, even rem I don't remember ever coming here to play with Akia at any rate. At least, I don't think I do. After some consideration, I decide to step out into the open. There isn't anything particularly special about this field. Sui seems to have continued on as well. There's no sign of her now. Huh. It really just is a big clearing. The sun's rays are beating down much harder here than in the middle of the road. Even if I don't look directly up into the sky, the sunlight is strong enough that my vision is all washed out. I can probably chalk it up to the fact that I just left the cool shade of the forest. It's like I've been transported to a hot summer day. When I come to, there's a blue sky. Large, large clouds towering above. The landscape shimmering in the heat. The overwhelming cries of cicadas. The cicada chorus. Ah. My consciousness is being burned to a crisp. With a thud, I fall to my knees on the scorching sand. I remember. I'd forgotten all about it, but I remember now. The blistering summer sun. The constant cries of cicadas. The suffocating stench. Of... At my feet? God. The lumpen mass of something that used to be alive. Stained. A deep red. Oh. The wound on my hmm. chest hurts. It's as if I'm being stabbed. Pain. Feels like a kitchen knife being plunged into my chest. Creepy choir music. Oh gosh. I killed him. I killed him. I killed him. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. I hear a cicada's voice in the distance, even though it's already the middle of autumn. The shimmering summer sun dazzles my upturned eyes. The lukewarm atmosphere makes me feel sick. All I can see are the cast-off shells of the cicadas. The thing at my feet is the empty shell of a cicada. An empty shell. Someone's empty shell. My wound opens. Oh. A bright red see stain seeps across my chest, dyeing even my hands in a deep, glistening crimson. Mm. Silhouette of a collapsed figure. The sound of a young girl's footsteps approaching. The clouds high up in the sky. That blue, fleeting summer sky. Without warning, Akiha's bloody, tear-streaked face flashes before my eyes. Ah, the cries of the cicadas feel like the needles trying to pierce a hole in my eardrums. 
<sighs> What's happening? My chest hurts. I feel nauseous. My wound closed up long ago, so why does it hurt so much? My chest is being destroyed. Scar opens up, and a red stain oozes out. How could this be? My wound hasn't healed at all. It hurts. I'm scared. This must be what it's like to die. My consciousness fades. My wound opens. Pus spells forth. Consumed by the illusory summer, my mind begins to regress. As if my soul is slipping away. I hear a thud as my body collapses, sprawled upon that grassy field. Bye, Yuki. Oh, later, Yuki. I hear the sounds of people talking. Akiya-sama, will you not be calling a doctor? You know better than... than to just... Bleh. You know better than to, to suggest something like that, Hisui. What good would calling a doctor do? Nissan's wound is hardly normal. Now... now is it? Akiha and Hisui are talking to each other. This is Shiki's room. It seems I was asleep on the bed. Are you saying this person right now isn't Shiki? Wait, are we the, the are we the twin? Did we kill Shiki? I wasn't going to say that because the kid looked like Shiki. The kid that was are we? bloody Weird. I finally regained but, consciousness. But then he also talked about earlier about how his handwrite, it was his handwriting that was on the walls and the stuff and his name. So who is it then? Uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's, wait, he's the de back in the bad ending where, where, she, where we died. There was talks about surgery. What if there was something with the surgery of Shiki and the twin? Or like, some third person? I don't know. I feel like until we know who this third person is, we don't really have anything concrete yet. True, we have nothing. We are just floating around in... The implications yes, are yeah, interesting, I though. really have no idea. I try to get up or call out to them, but my body won't move like I want it to. My chest doesn't hurt, but my body feels heavy as lead. It seems like my eyes and mouth are the only things I can move properly. Just what on earth were you thinking, Hisui? You knew full well not to allow Nissan to go anywhere near that place. I have no excuse. This isn't something that can be solved simply by apologizing. Did I not appoint you to be his servant specifically to prevent something like this from happening? How could you possibly manage to forget something so critical? Akia is furious. Her emotions on full display. This sort of behavior would normally be unthinkable for her. On the receiving end of the soul scolding is Isui, who continues to look down in shame. I don't fully understand what's going on here. Even so, I can at least tell that Hisui is being scolded because of me. Come now. Do you have not anything to say for yourself? Why don't you explain to me what it is you were doing all day? Not only did you fail to report that he had collapsed this morning, but you failed to prevent him from entering the forest. This was clearly intentional, wasn't it? If not, then you must be more feeble-minded than a dog. Answer me, Hisui. Do you also intend on disobeying me? 
as so he doesn't answer. The air between them grows heavier and heavier. Akiya bites her lip and takes a step toward Hisui. Plain to me, even to me that Akiya is about to hit Hisui. Hisui continues to stare at the floor, silently accepting what's coming to her. Hold on a sec. Akiha. Nisan! What's this? Nisan! You're awake? Yeah. The ruckus you are making just woke me up. Akiha awkwardly averts her gaze. Hisui doesn't even look this way. She just stands there with her head lowered. Listen, I don't want you to be hard on Asui. I'm not totally up to speed, but it seems like the cause of all this fuss is the fact that I collapsed, right? That's hardly something you can blame Asui for. All that happened here was me going off and keeling over of my own accord. I put strength into my arms and somehow managed to heave myself at least partially upright in bed. The simple act took everything I had in me. I don't think I could move another muscle at this point. But with Hisui looking this despondent right in front of me, I need to put on a show of being healthy even if it kills me. Jeez, you shouldn't get you getting into a scuffle over someone like me anyway. You may look immature, but I guess you're still a child after all. But you've been unconscious the whole day. You were comatose for over ten hours. Nothing like that has ever happened before. Just what would you do if you stayed like that and never woke up, Nisan? Idiot. Don't say something so ominous. This is just the usual anemia. Wait, what? Did you just say that it's been ten hours? I did. Like I said, you've been completely unconscious since this afternoon. Kia speaks in a reserved tone. However, I'm not worried about my body so much as I am the promise I made with Arcoide. Tomorrow night, you better be here at 10 o'clock sharp. The look in Arcoide's eyes when she said that was more serious than usual. If I break that promise, who knows what sort of unreasonable demands she'll make of me in return. Crap. I gotta go. Sorry, Akia. Okay. I'm going out, so I'll leave the rest to you. Don't bully Hisui too much, okay? Please don't say something so outrageous. I won't ask about your nightly outings anymore. I, I won't so please take care of yourself, at least for tonight. Uh, Akia's tone has become pleading. She keeps worrying about me this earnestly. I won't be able to retain my, my, my maintain my resolve. This sort of thing happens all the time, right? Heck. I used to collapse twice a day back in middle school. That's what has me so worried. Nisan, I'm begging you. Please listen to what I say, even if only for today. Kiha looks at me with a serious gaze. I'll... Oh no. We have to choose. I think we... I, I think we should go meet with Arkuide. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Honestly, since you are going to romance Arkuide, <laughs> the, the It's not even the romance in Arkuide. Thing. It's that there are, there's and also so much going promise. on that it just feels yeah. like the better choice. All, it, like, all of the... Most of the good... Most of the cards... Live. Yeah, most of the cards do point to Arkuide going to the choice. But also, this is the first time she, 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 she Aki has showing emotion. I know, that's and why like, I really do want to say, it's just difficult. rest, but I, I just... <sighs> you still have to hunt the vampires, and there's some evil stuff going on, but... Because, okay, okay, yeah. so my thought process is either we do as she says, and Arkawide, like, comes to the house, because she threatened she would do that... Or, if we don't go with her, she could get really badly hurt. But if we do go to meet with her, like, it, it would really hurt our sister, and that would make our relationship even worse. 
I don't know. I feel like if we also go with our... I feel like if we also go with our client, considering Shiki's current condition, he might be in for a world of hurt. More so than usual. This... This is like the hardest. This is actually the hardest choice I think we've gotten. Honestly. Playthrough. Yeah. Keith, what do you what do you think we should do? Uh, hmm. I really want to go to Arcoide, to be honest. Uh then let's go to Arcoide. All right. We fuck up. We fuck up. Yeah. Sorry, Akiha. But Big Brother has to do this. I appreciate that Akiha is concerned for my health, but I can't break my promise to Arcoid. Alright. I'll behave. Nothing but rest for me tonight. You didn't have to lie. Come on. Oh, he lied. I lie back down on the bed. <laughs> Makes it even worse. You're not gonna sneak out of the room later, right? Oh my god, no! This makes it even worse! Come on. Do you really think I'd be able to give you the slip of my body in this state? Alright. You make a valid point. Akia slumps her shoulders as she breathes a sigh of relief. Isui? Go inform a Kohaku that Nissan has woken up. Nissan, what do you want to do about dinner? Hmm. Dinner might be a bit much. Give my apologies to Kohaku-san, but I don't think I can stomach eating anything right now. I'll be better off going to sleep as is tonight. Ah, but I should be able to manage something liquid. If we have any vegetable juice, that would go down great. Understood. So we please relay what he said to Kohaku. As you wish. Vegetable juice, mixture of carrots, tomatoes, cabbage, red bell peppers, plums, and the like is to be prepared at once. Huh? I've never heard of a recipe like that before. Is it some sort of Kohaku-san special? Well then, I will also take my leave. Please don't hesitate to call me if you need anything. I will come running. No kidding you in my bad having be. to lie to her right now. <laughs> I'm I really I really thought that he would just go off and say, I'm sorry, but I have to do this. But no, him lying to her yeah, just I, I makes it worse. That because this this just hurts with how since sincere she's being for like the first, the first time. time exactly i feel hurt i feel pain akia switches off the lights and leaves the room i'm sorry akia i mutter myself i muttered to myself before setting up even though the light is off, my surroundings flicker between light and dark. Simply setting up is enough, up is enough to make me lightheaded. This anemia attack isn't like the ones I've had before. I understand that, but even so, I have to go to the park. This is her we're talking about, after all. If I leave that idiot hanging, she'll definitely keep on waiting for as many hours as it takes. I, un I unsteadily make my way off to the desk. I take my knife from the drawer and put on my jacket. <clears throat> I'm screwed. There's no way I can sneak out of here like this. I need to wait until I've recovered enough to at least walk properly. Otherwise, Susui will catch me and send me back to my room. Well, I tried. Arcoid will probably be mad at me if I arrive even later than I did yesterday. Still, I guess that isn't the end of the world. I sit down on the bed. 
one hour. If I rest for just one more hour, I ought to regain to the point where I can walk around again. How we feeling, gang? I feel like we're make we're uh, Shiki's making the wrong choice, and not just because He's I'm saying about Akiha. Yeah, he, he, in this state, even if he goes to to help argue, I what what can he do? He's weak. He is very tired and needs rest. He He's did. going to die if he helps <laughs> Akiha. He did promise. This I know, I know we promised, but come on. Uh, we promised. Well, our choice is made. And we did all agree on it, so <sighs> And if we need to go back after we've died in a maliciously horrible way, then we'll go back. Yeah, I guess so. I arrive at the park just before midnight. I may have regained the ability to walk, but, can, but I can only manage a snail's pace. It took me almost an hour to get here, as a result. Sarkyu Ride has some magic potion that revitalizes him. He is going to be of very little help. Yeah. I cast my eyes around my surroundings, shoulders heaving from my labored breathing. The Twilight Park. A solitary fi white figure stands motionlessly by the pavilion where we'd arranged to meet. Nobody. So she did wait. <laughs> it seems like she's noticed that I've finally arrived. Akroyd starts stomping over to me, her footsteps echoing loudly. You currently know no bounds. Cruelty. Oh, your cruelty knows no bounds tonight as well. I'm honestly amazed. It's great that you decided to turn up, but you'd better have a good reason for being two hours late. Akawai is rendered speechless the second she sees my face. Hold on. What's wrong, she? Your face is pale as the grave, and, and you don't seem lively at all. Don't, don't tell me you were out searching for the dead until now. What kind of adventure-loving freak do you take me for? You're way off the mark. I'm just feeling a little anemic, that's all. I suffer from spells like this from time to time. It's nothing to be surprised about. More importantly, I'm sorry. I tried to get here as fast as I could, but I still kept you waiting for two hours. Uh, well, I, I don't really mind, I suppose. I may have spent the entire time wondering why you were so late, but... I really don't get it. Why would you come all the way here with your body in that state, Shiki? I promised. Well, I made a promise, right? I said that I would help you out. So I'm not going to bail out over something like this. Oh. And I mean, that's not all. Just think about what happened yesterday. If I'd let you go off alone, who knows what might have happened to you? Well, I'm happy to hear you say that. Except for the last bit, though. All the same, it just doesn't sit right. Say what you will, but it still seems overly cruel. Cruel? What is? The fact that you don't understand your own body at all. Human lives may be naturally unstable things, but even by that standard, yours is far too turbulent. <sighs> You're in a position that has you has you brushing up against death on a regular basis. Maybe it's the black the backlash from your mystic eyes of death perception, or maybe it's simply the price you pay for life, for the life that you've been fated to live. 
Either way, you teeter back and forth at the top of the line, separating life and death, like the waves breaking on the shore. That's why you can't just brush off your anemia thinking, I was fine last time, so I'll be fine this time. Listen, Shaky, you have a resistance to external causes of death. I assure, I assume this is because you had a near-death experience resulting from that sort of cause before. But on the other hand, your resistance is internal causes of death is virtually non-existent. The anemia attacks you keep having are almost certainly your body's way of trying to protect itself. Which it is. Humans are able to perceive abnormality. Ab ab abnormalities. 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 Ab perceive abnormalities that occur inside of them, but your body is instinctively able to tell that something's wrong. When it senses that you're nearing the point of no return, this is the, its way of forcing you to take a break. The anemia you're suffering from is so debilitating, it honestly wouldn't be surprising if it killed you. You need to appreciate that it's only by some stroke of luck that you were able to wake up at all. I wouldn't go so far as to call it a revelation, but I still nod my head in understanding. Up until now, I thought of it like a computer being forcibly shut down, but I guess you could take a different perspective on it. For instance, the hypothesis that rather than being a result of a weak constitution, its anemia is actually a safety mechanism that my body employs in order to protect my life. In computer terms, it would be thermal throttling. I guess so. Yep. Also a force reboot. Hmm. Sounds a little far-fetched, but... Still, if something like this is true, so does that mean that whenever I start feeling anemic, all it would take is a little extra poke to send me over the edge? If that's the case, then every morning for the past seven years has been a cruel memento mori. Jeez, I'm giving you a serious warning here, you know. That isn't to say I don't appreciate you coming, though. But tonight you need to go home and get some rest, you hear me? Not quite suddenly approaches me. Maybe she really is genuinely concerned about my health. Whatever the reason... What? What? <laughs> okay. Just he just he just said boob, and I was like, oh god. Okay, whatever. Maybe she really is genuinely concerned about my health. Whatever the reason, she unguardedly brings her body close to mine. Before I have a chance to pull myself away, I feel her chest brush up against mine. My brain is once again assailed by dizziness. But this time, my anemia has nothing to do with it. I've been doing my best to not be too aware of her feminine allure. The softness of her breasts, her pale, your white skin, her beautiful golden hair. Uh, God, she's she hot. Um, <laughs> God. <laughs> Sorry, Arcoide, could you step back a bit? No. No. What are you saying that you... What? Are you saying that you can't trust trust what I say because I'm a vampire? No, it's because you're hot. You're really, really hot. And, uh... And I can throw you over my shoulder. Now you're going to stay on my shoulder and I'm going to carry you back to your goddamn palace, alright? Where's that coming from all of a sudden? There's no way I wouldn't trust you by now. Lie? Why are you trying to look the other way? Because your boobs are really big. Um. <clears throat> <laughs> Please, I need you to give me some space for uh personal reasons. I'm a guy, you know. I can't help but getting a little flustered if you're so close. Uh Pervert. Phew. I've escaped from the combined torture of being dizzy from anemia and dizzy from being too close to Arquat. At least for the time being. It, anyway, there's no reason for you, no need for you to be worried about me. Besides, I'll die for sure if I get attacked like again like I did last night. So it's not as though I can afford to be taking things easy here. Hold on. What do you mean by that? 
Like I said, when I was on my way back to the mansion... Oh, right. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. Arkwide. Last night, I was attacked by one of the dead. I think it was lying in wait to catch me on my way back to the mansion when I'm alone. Arkwide's facial expression turns grim. I can't believe this. How could you forget something as important as that? I'm ashamed. But hey, you know what they say. Whatever doesn't kill you. Don't shrug it off. That's just gonna make it worse. You idiot! You idiot! This is exactly why I'm so worried about you. I feel like you can't really blame me here. I mean, just the day I had something, something even stranger happened to me. You fucking adorable, fucking stupid dumbass. Well, I'll let it slide. More importantly, start filling me in on the details. Akroyd begins interrogating me, a stern look on her face. I calm myself down and try to explain everything as clearly as I can. However, I don't mention to her that the man in black was able to see lines of death. I don't have any proof that it, they definitely could, so it's possible that I was just imagining it. Well, that about wraps it up. After I finally finish explaining everything that happened, I still glance at Arkoid's face to try and get a read for her mood. Her gaze has remained unyieldingly sharp from the minute I started talking up until now. What do you think, Arkoid? Are the pitch black dead and the woman's in, woman in nun's clothing enemies of yours? I suppose so. I would consider both of them to be enemies. I don't know who the dead was, but I have a pretty good guess as to who that woman in the nun's habit was. There's a possibility that the person who saved you is an acquaintance of mine, if it really is her, that you might actually find my target before I do. Arkoid bites her lip in frustration. Her irritation is borderline murderous. Arkoid, the nun that saved me, you mentioned people like her before, right? Yeah, the church's heresy hunters. The one who saved you was an executor from their most troublesome department. But it's strange, the burial angel agents... Bleh. Burial agency shouldn't have been able to dispatch an executor this quickly. More importantly, why did you decide to fight? Uh, I don't know. I, I, he, he was like the same build as me. He didn't seem like that much faster, at least. Uh, and uh, I, I almost got him. No, you didn't. You were gonna die. You said that you would work together with me, but you never said that you would fight alone. Akroyd casts a scowl in my direction. She's worried about me after I put myself in danger on my own. Ah, jeez, I feel so left out. I can't believe you would do something so fun behind my back. It's like I've lost my chance to get out in the action. Perhaps I spoke too soon. Can I ask you something? What happened to that serious atmosphere we had a second ago? I'm seriously upset here. I thought I was finally going to get a chance to fight alongside you. It's certainly a dangerous desire, but it's equally true that I don't hate hearing her say that. <sighs> Listen, I know I fought on my own, but I had to, okay? My hands were tied. I have no intention of fighting another vampire without having you there. Hmm. And why did you have to, exactly? Because he was trying to kill me. I don't know what you're talking- I don't know what to say about that. 
I guess people would saw the sense of justice. Something along those <gasps> lines, anyway. A sense of justice, you say? I guess people would call it a sense of justice. Something along those lines, anyway. Right now, I'm regretting it a little. Your knife. <laughs> would would they also maybe call themselves the bone of their sword? I am the bone of my sword. <clears throat> Sorry, a frog in my throat. Anyways. Sorry, a shiro in my throat. A sense of justice? Sorry, I had a shiro in my throat. You see, what's funny is I actually met a boy with red hair. I bumped into him and he was having this big old fight while I was trying to make my way to this city. He was having a big old fight with some blonde bitch. Not as pretty as me, obviously. And he was talking about his whole, like, bone of his sword. I think it was something sexual, but I didn't want to get in the middle of their little role play. <laughs> Arquaid. Amazing. <laughs> Arquaid, what the hell are you talking about? Arquaid tilts, her head. Arquaid tilts her head in bewilderment. I feel exactly the same way inside. I was painfully reminded yesterday that such things are nothing more than a pretext. At the time, when I noticed that there was a figure in front of me, I was filled with fear. As I realized that my opponent was something extraordinary, I could do nothing but tremble. After that, I took out my knife as if an answer, and we began to fight to our death. And we began our fight to the death. A sense of justice alone isn't enough to allow one person to kill another person. Huh, that's what you think, you idiot! <laughs> That's what you think. I've got swords that would say different. <laughs> got a pair of swords that would say differently, <laughs> Shiggy. Not even the instinct to save one's own life is enough. That's because the death of oneself and the death of another are fundamentally unrelated concepts. It takes a powerful motive to allow someone to act under such extreme circumstances. If I kill, then I'll be saved. If I don't, then I'll perish. A conclusion to end all conclusions. Purified conviction and motive. In that moment, I consisted of nothing else. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. What was that flash? Hmm. No. It's nothing. Come on. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get started. I dragged myself all the way out here, so it'd be a shame if we didn't track down at least one of the dead stalking the city. Hey now, I'm getting seriously upset over here, Shiggy. That was an entirely separate conversation. I told you to get some rest, didn't I? We've already cleaned out most of the dead's feasting grounds, so... We should just use tonight for reassessing the situation and prepare for tomorrow. The look on Arkoid's face as she says this doesn't leave much room for argument. I can't really help but go along with her reasoning, either. On top of that, it's not as though I'd be able to find the vampire on my own, even if I did go out looking for them. <sighs> Alright then, if you're going to be so insistent about it, then I'll behave and use tonight to rest up. I'm glad you're being understanding. This isn't just because you were attacked last night. You've been running your body into the ground recently. If you don't get a good night's sleep tonight and come back as your usual self tomorrow, I won't be too happy about it. Ah, uh, I see what you mean. Yeah, it would definitely be a problem if the person that's supposed to be helping you ended up dragging you down instead. Okay. I'll make sure I'm back in fighting shape by tomorrow. That's not what I meant, though. Narcoid grumbles, seemingly discontent about something. As usual, I have no idea what's going on inside that head of hers. Well then, I'm off back to the mansion. See you tomorrow, Narcoid. I give her a wave and set off back home. Hey, Shiki. But then Narcoid calls me to a halt. What's up? Is there something else you need? Uh, I just feel like I should offer. Would you like me to walk you back? Walk back with you? 
Koed makes a shy proposal, averting her gaze as she does so. It seems like she's worried about what happened yesterday in her own way. Having her accompany ba me back wouldn't be a bad idea in that, in that regard, but... Akiha and Arkyoid meet. No! No, I think I'll pass. I'm terrified to think of what would happen tomorrow morning if someone spots you in the vicinity of the mansion. God damn it. It's okay. I can walk back my, by myself now. You don't need to worry yourself over something like this. Brett. It's a brief. It's brief, but Arkwide lowers her head. Only a moment before looking back up. In that case, I'll see you tomorrow. After waving goodbye, the vampire in white walks away into the darkness of night. Oh, oh, we're already on day 10. Okay. Damn, that was quick. I think we should go to sleep now because I have to go get my new glasses. All right. And it's almost four in the morning, so that's a perfect place to stop. All right. Cool. Dang Every it. Everyone say goodbye. Everyone say goodbye. All right. Later, goodbye. game. Bye.